you have all heard of the pizza effect, right? Who hasn't heard of the pizza effect? Raise your hands. Most, who knows of the pizza effect? Raise your hand. Yeah. All right, I'll explain. <laughs> Everyone knows what pizza is, yes? <laughs> You may not know it, but pizza in Italy was considered a low-class food. <laughs> Only poor people would eat pizza. The higher classes would never think to eat pizza. But then one, one year, somehow or other, some Italians brought pizza to the USA. And very quickly, in the USA, pizza became the, mo the, the most, it became the favorite food, as it is to this day. It's the most, everyone's favorite food is pizza. But in Italy, where pizza comes from, pizza was looked down on as low class for poor people. Mm -hmm. But it went to the USA and became famous, number one. So then, what the Italians in the USA did was bring back the pizza to Italy, reintroduce pizza in Italy as the most popular American food. <laughs> and so now, in Italy, pizza is recognized as a you know, topmost food for all classes of persons. But it had to go out. The pizza had to go outside of it, Italy to get fame and get acceptance. So that was Srila Prabhupada's strategy with Krishna's instructions in Bhagavad Gita. He felt that in the 50s and 60s in India, no one was listening to him. He wanted to present Bhagavad Gita as it is, present knowledge of Krishna as Krishna is. But he was not getting the reception that he wanted. So he went to the West with the knowledge of Krishna, made Krishna famous in the West, and then reintroduced <laughs> the Krishna knowledge back into India by saying, just see, the Americans and Europeans, they're, they're mad after Krishna. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> so that's the pizza effect. <laughs> Although something comes from your area, you don't consider it important. But when it goes somewhere else to the other side of the world and becomes famous, then you take interest. Oh, yes, this is ours. <laughs> Krishna is ours. <laughs> What we want to do on a global level is to combine the traditions, the genuine traditions of life in India with the adventure, adventurousness and enterprising spirit of the West. In that way, we won't say whether East is best or West is best. Let's look at the whole global picture and how to combine the positive characteristics of all the areas of the world. So India has knowledge of how human society, human individuals should live in a progressive way, a balanced way a way that gradually people can make progress toward the ultimate goal of life. The West doesn't have that knowledge, but the West has a very enterprising spirit, very just do it. <laughs> so if you combine the two, the stability that life in India brings with the 
enterprising spirit that especially the USA brings, and especially New York. <laughs> if you combine all that, then you have the best. The combination is the best. It is not that the East is the best or the West is the best. <laughs> Krishna is for everyone. <laughs> Just like the sun seems to rise in the East, but the sun is for everyone. It, <laughs> the sun is for shining on everyone's head. Krishna is for all living entities.